Budget Home Lab. What is this? Budget Home Lab is a series where I'm gonna be creating a home lab all with budget hardware. And what is a home lab? Well, a home lab is one or more servers that you run in your home to host various applications and use for testing purposes. And why am I building one? Well, I'm building one because it's extremely fun and it's gonna be useful in my day-to-day -day life. So if you're interested in following my journey of using ARM, x86, and any budget parts to smarten up my home, let's get started. All right, so welcome back to Budget Home Lab episode two. In today's video, we are going to be building a project that I want to do for quite some months now. We are going to be building a budget Proxmox server. So let's dive straight into the process. And hello to PCBWay.com. PCBWay is a service that allows you to create custom PCB prototypes, flexible PCBs, 3D printing, and much more. And when comparing PCBWay to other PCB printing services, you might notice that PCBWay automatically upgrades all of their standard PCBs to TG150-164 free. They also provide you with a quick order PCB section to help you pick and design your PCBs nice and quickly. PCBWay also automatically gives new members $5 for free, so I say that's a pretty nice bonus. PCBWay is also currently having a special event that comes with special prizes. For those of you who are DIYers, this is going to be right up your alley. So if you have a custom project which includes a PCB design and that you've made yourself all by yourself, you can submit it into this contest. And by participating in this contest, you will automatically get a free Raspberry Pi Pico. And if chosen as a winner, even better prizes such as cash and Raspberry Pis, which would be pretty valuable now days. So yeah, if you're into PCBs, 3D printing, CNC, etc., PCBWay has it covered. So first of all, what is Proxmox? So Proxmox is a type 2 hypervisor which allows you to run tons of virtual machines or LXC containers at once. This could be useful to some so that they will be able to run many different operating systems at the same time or run applications that are isolated from each other in their own operating systems. And personally, this will be useful to me because I will, I'm will i going to have one virtual machine running TrueNAS, another LXC container running some Dockers, and so on. It's going to be a really fun platform to play with and I would, if you haven't ever heard of it, definitely do some YouTube searching about it. It is a really cool platform. So, you know, I said budget, right? So what type of system am I talking here? Well, before we talk about that, let me do say that some of the parts that I chose for the build were inspired by YouTuber Raid Owl in this video right here. So he made an awesome video about making a budget server as well, but I took some of the things he did and kind of made my own video. So let's dive straight into the parts used for this build, starting from the CPU and going all the way through every part, why I chose it, where I bought it, and what they costed. For the CPU, I went with a used Intel Xeon E5-4667 V3, which I purchased used from eBay.com for only 49 US dollars. And this CPU has a whopping 16 cores and 32 threads. Like, this guy has some real power. And I thought it was a pretty good bargain when seeing that $49, especially when I compared this to some of the other listings for the same CPU that were like over $100 and some of them even being over $200. I mean, that $49 looked pretty good. So if you're following along to possibly build a server similar to mine, don't feel the need to purchase the exact same CPU that I do. Go ahead, search, you might find better deals for other more powerful or less powerful CPUs compared to what you're trying to do. But I found this one for $49 and with that 16 cores, I think this is going to be an incredible piece to this build. Okay, so next on the list is going to be the motherboard. So this is where some of you may not go or may not choose which the motherboard that I did. So for my motherboard choice of this build, I decided to go with a new 
Chinese motherboard from eBay, and this one is called the Machinist X99-RS9. So, I definitely do, do know that there is some skepticism over these Chinese motherboards, but I was able to pick up mine for $96 US new. So I thought, well, why not just give it a give it a shot? So it, this is a micro ATX motherboard, which was another reason I wanted it. I live in an apartment, so space kind of is limited, and I wanted to kind of... I, for this build, I don't I don't want like a huge build. I kind of wanted a little bit of a more compact, smaller build. So that micro ATX was a reason for me choosing this board as well. But to be honest, some of you PC guys may might laugh at me, but I thought that micro ATX and mini ATX was the same thing. So I was actually hoping to build a little bit of a smaller server than I actually end up doing in this video, but in the end, it did work out. So for the RAM of this build, I went with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 ECC memory clocked at 2133 megahertz. So not the speediest of RAM, but it should get the job done. And I paid $81.99 for this RAM off of eBay as well. It was new, so I could have picked up a similarly priced RAM off of somewhere like Amazon as well if I wanted to. And you, of course, could always go with more or less RAM. I probably don't even, even need this much RAM. I just thought, why not? And as for the GPU, I went with an incredibly fancy and powerful, I'm telling you, fancy and powerful GPU priced at only 10 US dollars. Mind-boggling. Ah, uh, no. I just bought the GPU so I would be able to have video output to install the main operating system since you can't really do that without a graphics card. But, I mean, some of you guys may even have spare graphics cards laying around. In, in that case, you wouldn't even need to purchase one. I just bought the cheapest one I could find to be able to complete the OS installation. And for my CPU cooler of this build, I went with a Cooler Master Hyper 21.2 Black Edition due to its support for my CPU socket and because I thought it would be a nice cooler. I probably could have went for something cheaper, but I wanted to be sure that my CPU would stay cool, not overheat. And you know, Cooler Master is a pretty reputable brand, so I thought, why not? And this fan costed $45 US dollars. And as for storage, I bought this 256 gigabyte Samsung NVMe drive, and this is going to be kind of the thing that's going to hold most of my VMs. And yes, my motherboard does support M.2, which some of the motherboards for the CPU socket probably don't, which is a cool reason to purchase this machinist motherboard. And I paid 30 US dollars for this storage drive. And as for extra HDD storage for my NAS, well, I had a one terabyte drive already laying around, which I will be currently using. And I didn't spend any, spend any money on extra space for now. Later on, possibly I will be purchasing more storage. But for now, this one terabyte drive should do the job for me so far. And as for the PCU or the power supply of the build, I picked up this 750 watt semi modular Sharkoon PSU. I probably didn't need 750 watts, but I thought of it as a fu as future proofing for projects in the future that I might want to build. And it costed, and it was new, and it costed 56 US dollars. So I would say that's a pretty good deal too. And finally the PC case for the build. So for this, I went with the AeroCool Atomic Micro ATX case. So it's a little bit shorter than mid ATX, but it is kind of wide too. So it's not a really, it's not a super compact or tiny build. So I, I mean, yeah, it's still a good case though. And it has a room for tons of drives and like everything that I should need in it. And I paid 71 US dollars for it. So definitely hear me out. This was not a budget case at all for this build. I could have went with some like $10 old use PC case for sure. But honestly, I just kind of spent a little bit more because I wanted something that looked nice because this is going to be in my room. I mean, I don't have some extra office space to store my servers. This is going to be sitting in my room. So I thought, why not get something that looks a little bit cool? And... I really like the way that that tempered glass opened up. I know it's a, such a small feature, but not having to unscrew the tempered glass and just have that handle will make adding or changing stuff in the server so much easier, I mean, and much less time consuming. So that was a really cool feature as well. So now I've went over all of the parts of this PC build. So the total cost of this project ended up being somewhere around 441 US dollars. Probably maybe not exactly, but pretty close to that price point. So let me hear let me give you let me give you the full specs of the system. So overall we have a 16 core CPU 
32 gigabytes of RAM, a 750 watt power supply, a micro ATX case, 256 gigabytes of SSD NVMe storage, one terabyte HDD, hopefully to be upgraded later on. So all of these things purchased for 441 US dollars, which I personally think it seems like a pretty good deal, especially for a 16 core server. And like I mentioned a little bit earlier on, if you were building a server like I am right now, you can always go ahead and choose something cheaper or more expensive. That's that's a cool thing when designing your own server. You have the flexibility to choose the CPU, this RAM, and that is really why I kind of wanted to do this. It seems really fun. So after getting all these parts together though, I went ahead and I started to assemble the PC. And yes, this was my first assembling or my first time assembling a PC slash server ever. So I was fairly nervous about doing something wrong or breaking the CPU or something, but huge shout out to LTDT's incredible and thorough guide. But after some time though, as you can see after this montage, I got the PC booting. So after that, I went on to install Proxmox, which sadly I did not record the process, but honestly, I don't really think I need to. If you're trying to follow this guy along and you want to know how to do that, I will leave some guides in the description below, but it's not really too hard to install. Um, so after I got that set up, I installed a few virtual machines, which I would like to go ahead and showcase. So let's head over to my desktop to show you guys what the Proxmox dashboard looks like on this 441 pretty cool server. All right, so here we are on our Proxmox dashboard. And yes, this is running on the server. As you can see right here under resources, we have 32 CPUs, which in reality, we really only have 16 physical cores, but we do have 32 threads. And in memory, all 32, 32 gigabytes of RAM does show up and our storage looks correct too, which is awesome. So I already went ahead and I went through the entire setup process of Proxmox and I configured it to my liking. And I even went ahead and I created a few virtual machines as you can see right here so that is kind of what i'm going to be showing in this video but of course there is a lot more that you could kind of configure or do in proxmox but i'm going to be using it on a pretty basic level so what i did basically is i went and i went to the top right here said create a vm and i created a virtual machine and i selected the true nas scale iso for it so true nas is an operating system that allows you to create a nas but it has a its own dashboard and it's it has a lot of really cool stuff so personally i probably don't need it just yet because i'm really only using one drive but i just kind of want to try it because it seems cool so that's what we're doing so i went ahead and i installed true nas scale which the scale version is based off of linux and i installed it in that virtual machine and then I was able to open it up in this new tab because if I go to console, which where it is installed, you can see that you can open up the interface at this IP address. So I have it right here. So for this system, I gave it 16 cores. So it probably is a little bit overkill. And I gave it 16 gigabytes of memory. I possibly may need to give it a bit more because I did see that memory usage being pretty high when copying over files. But currently, it seems like it should be fine. And then I went ahead and I added one storage pool right now that has just one terabyte. Like I said, I don't have any other storage, but possibly down the road, I will add more. And currently, I'm only using 50 gigabytes of that storage. 
And one cool thing about TrueNAS Scale is that it allows you to host Docker containers inside of it. So I went ahead and I added a few applications. So I installed Photo Prism, which I'm still not fully sure if I will be using. I'm going to try playing around with it a little bit more to see if it's a viable photo backup alternative for me. But for now, I went ahead and I installed it in here. And you can, and it works just like a Docker container right here. I can click Web Portal, and here I have Photo Prism running inside of a Docker container. And I also installed Cloudflare, which allows me to turn this Photo Prism into an actual URL accessible on the internet, not just an IP address. If you would be interested in a full video on Cloudflare tunnels, let me know because it is a really, really cool service. But if we go to Available Applications, you can see that there are tons of available applications when you add a new catalog called True Charts, which just expands the amount of apps in the system by tons and tons of applications. So it's a really cool thing as well. So that's kind of my current setup for TrueNAS, um, and I can access it from my file manager if I like. I might do some changes down the road. TrueNAS scale looks kind of cool. And for my second virtual machine, which is actually not really a virtual machine, is a CT container, an LXC container. So this type of thing actually kind of shares the kernel with the main Proxmox. So it's still its own system, though. So it, it is kind of a bit quicker than a virtual machine. But, and, but for what I'm going to be using it for, which is running docking containers, it seems to do the job just fine. So I gave it 8 gigabytes of memory. And I gave it six cores. So for now, that seems fine. So that's what I'm going to leave it at. And what did I do? Of course, I went ahead and I installed Portainer to configure my Docker containers. So I installed Portainer on here. And by the way, that new user interface of Portainer looks kind of cool, honestly. I need to play around with it a little bit more. But for now, it looks cool. So I installed Portainer. And if we go to see which what containers I actually installed. So currently I have Watchtower, which is going to update all of my containers. It's just something to help to update. And then we have Portainer, which is this application. And then we installed Nextcloud, which is kind of why I installed this. So you know, in my first episode, I showcased that I was using the Odroid M1 to run all of my docking containers. Well, I'm going to use this to run some of the docking containers that just don't run as well on that. And one of those is Nextcloud. Nextcloud seems to be a little bit iffy on ARM. For me personally, it doesn't seem to be as quick, but I can install it on this server, this x86 server, and it seems to run qu a little bit quicker. So that's why I'm going to keep it like that for now. So yeah. So overall, that's kind of a brief overview of how I've set up this server so far. And if you ask me, is this all you're going to do with it? I hope not. I hope to be able to find more use cases and expand my what I'm doing with this and hopefully make more videos on this exact server because I think there there could be tons of cool Docker containers or just services to check out to see what we could do with this thing. I think this server could be a really fun toy or fun Con I can make a lot of fun content ideas for this channel and also just make my life easier at home or make my life more organized or stuff like that. It could be a pretty fun thing. And quick sneak peek to my dashboard that I'm running on the Odroid M1, which I showcased in episode one, I changed over from Dashy to Homer because I just I felt like the simpleness of Homer was a little bit nicer and I really just love this user interface so this is what it's currently looking like I hope to make an update video later on with all of my containers in here but as you can see I think the dashboard is looking pretty good so far so if you if you'd like to see another episode on this let me know down below all right, so here we are at the end of this video that I hope you guys enjoyed because, I mean, it did take a little bit of time. So I hope you all found this video interesting and possibly even inspiring. So I honestly think that this is a pretty cool project to attempt doing, especially if you're just getting into home labbing like me or you just want a new hobby. This is something you can try and there is so much you can do. There will always be more that you can change or add on your server. Not I'm not only talking about hardware, I'm talking about software too so it is really cool and you really don't need tons of money for a server you can find good parts and pieces on ebay or amazon for affordable prices like i did in this video so with that said i would just love it if you would hit that subscribe button i'm hoping to get to 10k soon now it would just mean a lot so thanks for watching